Okay, let's start the complex uh, PCI master class three session uh, about the CTO. And I am Yang Su Jiang from Bundang Chai University, and my co moderator is uh, Dr. Satoru Uchuchi from Japan. Okay, good uh, afternoon. Will you start the uh, okay, okay, okay. moderation for first and second so, lecture? Okay. So, uh, we'd like to start uh, this yes. session about CTO. So, uh, I would like to introduce the first speaker, Dr. Junmi Ang from uh, Asa Medical Center, CTO revascularization in 2022, guideline and concept change. Dr. Ang, please. So, we have the uh, excellent uh, uh, panelists here. Uh, Dr. Jumi An also, Chung Yun Cho, Dr. John Chung, uh, Makuta Havara from Remote, and Dr. Chun Te Li Hong, and Vincent Ong Hing Ko, and Dr. Sunao Nakamura, and Dr. Gyumi Park. So, Dr. An, please. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Dr. Satoru Jujiji Sensei. I'm very happy to see you in Seoul again. So I have to confess that before I prepared this lecture, I didn't know that the change of CTO guidelines. So <laughs> <laughs> in front of CTO interventionist, my lecture, I have no offense to interventionist. Anyway, I'd like to go forward. My disclosure, I'm a FFI believer and I was holy. I have been a complex PCI interventionist. I've been an integrated only CTO interventionist for a long time. <laughs> Nowadays, I'm trying to literate approach. This is my uh, one case, 67 year old electric fraction, 18% ICMP. The surgeon refused to surgery, surgeon by himself refused the patient to have us operate. So I did a complete revascularization, stage PCI for three days. I used the large of stand, large of balloon, contrast 500, many balloons, procedure times around two hours. Another case is a more recent case, little grade, until it failed. The many stand, many balloons, but the final result looks good. Even though we are the main center of decision CTO trial, though we are doing the many CTO intervention in my practice. The before decision CTO and uh, many the random trial about the CTO clinical study, 2018 ESC guideline more favored the CTO intervention, 2A, B. 2A means the favorable something. But uh, 2021 United States guideline, I was surprised to see that. In patients with a shoot of anatomy who have a refractory angina on medical therapy after treatment of non-CTO lesions, the benefit of CTO of a CTO to improved uh, improved symptom is uncertain. Other description was very surprising. This uh, uh, guideline issued after Euro CTO distance CTO clinical trial and explorer and revascularization randomized trial. I like to introduce the uh, recently published uh, clinical trials in CTO field. Can open CTO save the lives? The enthusiasm of uh, opening CTO, CTO intervention came from the registry data. Previous registry data showed that the success PCI showed a lower rate of mortality. Even in barometer scenario, more recent registry data showed that the success P CTO PCI showed a lower mortality compared with the failed CTO. Then how to interpret this registry data? Success PCI improve patient survival or failed PCI reduce patient survival. Yes, we know that CTOs are the inherent, inherently stable because these vessels are already occluded. 
there is no rush to treat them, and medical therapy or other option can be explored. In addition, ischemia, ischemia extended the trial uh, in nourishing the stable angina patient. During the extended follow-up period, there is no difference regarding the overall mortality of to eight years. So I think the more appropriate interpretation of registry data would be the failure PCI may reduce the patient survival. So actually, why? The progress C2 registry, recent registry, show that the PCI, PCI, uh, C2 PCI is not a risk-free procedure, particularly the retrograde approach associated with 7.5% of risk of perforation. In addition, this is a contemporary series of CTO PCI. Tamponade is uh, not frequent, but uh, around uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 1.3. Because open CTO registry show that uh, 14, 15% of patients experienced at least one complication from open CTO registry. So actually, we, we needed the randomized trial. Decision CTO clinical trial was uh, the first randomized trial uh, targeting for the uh, uh, clinical endpoint. So we, we enrolled 800 patients, but the premature stopped because of a slow enrollment. So compare the PCO, uh, CTO PCI versus no CTO PCI. The in no CTO PCI groups, we did the non CTO PCI, about 80% of patients received. Up to four year follow up, there is no statistical difference regarding clinical endpoint. Primary endpoint test MI stroke, any rationalization, no difference. Death MI individual endpoint, no difference. In addition, quality of life improved during the follow up, but there is no significant difference between medical treatment and CTO PCI group. Another clinical trial, EuroCTO trial, different from the decision CTO clinical trial, EuroCTO clinical trial primary endpoint is a change in quality of life between the baseline and 12 months. The different from the decision CTO trial, EuroCTO clinical trial showed that the benefit of improvement of quality of life in group of CTO PCI. What is different between the decision CTO and EuroCTO clinical trial? In EuroCTO clinical trial, non-CTO PCI was done before randomization. But even though the EuroCTO investigators advertised that the EuroCTO is the only one clinical trial to show that the CTO PCI improved the patient the quality of life, but the, they presented a three-year follow-up clinical outcome data show that the all-cause deaths numerically higher in CTO PCI group, 5.4 versus 2.2. PBLU is not, not significant because of uh, statics underpowered. Another randomized trial is the Explorer trial. Explorer trial enrolled 280 STEMI patients with the CTO, randomized to the CTO PCI versus no medical treatment. Primary endpoint is MRI assessed LV ejection fraction at four months. But uh, at four months, ejection fraction difference, there is no difference regarding the ejection fraction. I was surprised to see that the incidence of cardiac death numerically higher in CTO PCI group. Another randomized trial, Levascular, Levascular randomized trial, they enrolled 200 CTO patients randomized to the CTO PCI versus non CTO PCI to compare the change in segmental wall thickening at six months, but the no difference between two groups. So the, I'd like to in, uh, introduce the, some uh, a, a clinically important subgroup regarding the CTO intervention. OAT trial compared the PCI versus the medical treatment for infant-related artery total occlusion more than 24 hours subacute stage. In subacute stage, infant-related artery, even though PCI did not improve patient survival, in addition, similar to the my second, uh, first patient, the very low ejection fraction, uh, I don't know the, how many CTO patients in order to revive the PCI, PCIS2 trial, 
PCI did not improve the patient outcome, uh, outcome over the medical treatment in ischemic cardiomyopathy. Another interesting subgroup is the uh, fatal uh, ventricular fibrillation or ventricular arrhythmic patient. Yes, CTO is associated with the fatal arrhythmic event, but uh, meta-analysis showed that uh, it is not clear revascularization has no impact, has an impact on outcome of patient with the CTOs. So let's go back to the 2021 guidelines. Based on the, this kind of clinical evidence, they said that the benefit of PCI of a CTO to improve symptom is uncertain. However, recently registered uh, another random trial showed that the CTO PCI reduced the patient ischemic burden. Registry data show that the reduction of ischemic burden after CTO intervention, if a patient have no residual ischemia, patient survival is better than with the ischemic, uh, with the signal to ischemic burden. So some hint, so some, a certain sub, subset of patient with the CTO may have a benefit from the CTO intervention. So there is a two ongoing randomized trial, ischemia CTO trial and novel CTO trial. Inclusion, inclusion criteria in, included uh, myocardial ischemia and reversal perfusion defect in their uh, inclusion criteria. So uh, I like to see the, the any benefit of the CTO intervention from the, this uh, uh, two randomized trial in the future. So I like to, this is my almost last slide. In the syntax trial, we already, we, it was, we've seen the large of variability in the performance. It is well known that the performance of a CTO intervention is very dependent on the operator's expertise. So I think this is my conclusion. Data in favor of CTO PCI was entirely for symptom relief, but evidence is very weak. Non-CTO ischemia producing significant stenosis would be more relevant and safer target for symptom relief. Risk of CTO in intervention are significantly higher and need a higher end skill to treat successfully, particularly the retrograde approach. RCT did not demonstrate the improvement function, has been equivocal with regard to symptoms. Shared decision making should inform the treatment of the patient with the refractory angina despite of medical treatment with the remaining CTO chronal lesion with careful discussions of the limitation of treating these lesions as well as potential benefit. The last phrase came from the guideline itself. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. I would like to introduce the next speaker. BK came from Severance Hospital, uh, procedure planning host complex CTO PCI. We are going to have a discussion time after all speaker finished. So, to BK, please. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, today I would like to talk about the pre-procedure planning for a complex CTO PCI, as mainly focused on the role of CT scan. This is my disclosure. So, oh, this is the uh, slide from the uh, Professor Yang Su Chang. is a 2015. Is the the title was the, the most important thing for the uh, successful CTO. Is a uh, from from the uh, ten important things. Is uh, as you can see, is angiogram and CT, and with uh, a thorough uh, understanding regarding the CT finding and angio finding would be the most important one. So. For the uh, procedure planning for uh, CTO success, is uh, what the, what is the most important thing? Is I would like to focus the pre-procedure CT scan for the complex CTO together with the CAG review. So uh, this is the uh, uh, some summary of the uh, randomized CT CTO trial. In this uh, study, is that we would like to evaluate the effect of the pre-procedure CT scan on the uh, success of the CTO. Uh, the primary endpoint was the rate of the successful recanalization. Is this study was conducted 12 centers in South uh, Korea. So as you can see, is pre-procedure CT guidance for uh, the CTO resulted in a higher 
uh, success rate with numerically fewer complications, uh, and also uh, this higher success is more predominantly uh, observed in patients with typical CTO, is uh, JCTO greater than 2. So uh, this is the some uh, explanation of the preprocessor CT analysis from the uh, CT CT trials. The, we usually made two orthogonal uh, CT imaging matching with the CAG as a uh, 3D volume rendering and MPL imaging corresponding to orthogonal view, and then the, we uh, perform the qualitative and quantitative analysis of CTO from the MPL image like this, and also we analyze the segment around the CTO. We check the a uh, size and vessel and lumen and tortuosity in proximal and distal reference segment. So the uh, CT uh, guidance for complex CTOs, the, what about the uh, uh, case of the blunt stump or long torture CTOs, the preprocessor CT uh, could show the exact anatomical location related with adjacent is side branch and the course of the proximal to distal CTO cap. So this is the, some analysis of the reason for recanalization failure in CT CTO trials. As you can see, when you look at the instance of the failure to enter the cap due to the anatomical ambiguity, in CT group is there was no case. But the uh, angiographic group is there was a significantly higher rate in meaning the CT could help to uh, uh, guide, of the, especially in case of the anatomical ambiguity CTO. So this is the case is air to austere CTO, so the male 61 patient, so uh, LAD CTO, but we are not sure the where is the LAD osteum, the meaning the proximal CTO cap is ambiguous CTO anatomy. So the uh, we can uh, some um, estimate is dispersion, 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 but the uh, CT scan uh, revealed the uh, nearly hidden, separated LAD austere total occlusion dispersion. Is uh, the osteum is uh, this position? So based on the this uh, concept, is uh, using the CTO wires is very easily uh, achieve the success of the CTO LAD or CTO after stenting. This is the final CAG. So. Pre-procedure CTO CT scan would be helpful to identify the uh, ambiguous CTO entry. Is that this is the very similar role of the wiring on the IBUS. So the, what about the case of the uh, uh, CTO with the severe classification? As I previously showed you, the, uh, some cross-section images, the, we can estimate the degree and degree and severity of the classification. So the, and also, we can visualize the uh, CTO course and plot characteristics. It may be the, very helpful for navigating and selecting the proper wires and device without increasing the risk of the preprocessor complication. Especially, what about the real time case? Is a real time CTO case is a, the from the uh, longitudinal and cross sectional result of CT analysis. Uh, this is the uh, very uh, good guiding for the uh, success of the real time CTO case. So, and this is the also is the uh, analysis of the uh, reason for the recanalization failure in the CT CTO trial. In CT group, there was no case with failure regard, related with the uh, uh, let grade PCI. So I will show you the uh, another case. This is the 48, a very recent CTO case. Is this is the uh, uh, previous JG. So the, as you can see, LAD CTO was noted, but the uh, proximal stump was not clear. And this is the uh, LAD. So the, uh, they performed the ad hoc RCA CTO is using the anti-grade wire escalation up to the Gaia second. But the, as you can see, is the wire uh, location was in the uh, first lumen, and then they finished the procedure. So the, uh, this patient revisit um, uh, my clinic. So the, uh, I initially performed again is a, a preprocessor uh, CT analysis for the retry RCA CTO. So maybe the uh, this is the previous wire puncture site. Very uh, tight stenosis. Uh, just they assumed that maybe uh, this portion would be the proximal stump. But the uh, CT analysis we matched is the, uh, the some uh, 
uh, puncture site was uh, definitely different from the uh, CT analysis. This is the uh, RB branch. Is, uh, this is the CTO initial segment. It's the meaning the uh, just uh, just after the tight stenosis, LAD, stenosis, LAD, CTO was started, meaning the uh, maybe the initial uh, CTO uh, start point, proximal cap is not this one, is maybe the, this portion. So based on this concept, we tried again the previous failed RCA CTO with the last month. This is the uh, angiograms. As you can see, the, is a, there was a no stump of the related with the uh, anti-grade. Uh, so this is the retrograde from the uh, LAD to RCA. So the base the previously show you the uh, some image we started it the uh, anyway the uh, anti-grade preparation using the UB3 and Gaia next two. The, but the, uh, this uh, this portion, so uh, Kaya next two uh, advancement was not easy. So uh, we also again hybrid approach is the uh, septal wiring. This one uh, sewer zero three, and then the we uh, uh, successfully perform the uh, septal wiring like this, and then we start again integrate. Uh, uh, preparation after the advancement retrograde Corsair. This is the tip injection of the retrograde. Is the wire position was good. After that is a uh, uh, retrograde wiring. Is a uh, UB three is uh, up to uh, this portion. So after that we should do the uh, hybrid approach, both retrograde anti grade wirings. The uh, as I previous show you the uh, anti grade pr uh, preparation anyway very essential for the successful retrograde success. So the based previous CT concept is anti grade uh, wires the, uh, using the Gaia X two is a retrograde wire is a UB3 and then the two uh, wire position was really good after that we performed the reverse cart and then the successfully uh, uh, performed the uh, externalization and then we performed a, a pre dilation after IBUS evaluation based on uh, IBUS uh, Information we perform two stent with overlapping is a 3.0 and 3.5 like this, and this is the final IBUS is uh, we finished this procedure. So this is the also data of the uh, procedure characteristics and outcome in CT CTO trials. So. This is the analysis of the time of the anti-grade only crossing time. So CT guided group showed a significantly lower time, meaning the very effective, especially in the anti-grade uh, only uh, procedure. And also is a coronary preparation late and, or, and also periprocessor MI. CT guided group showed the significant not significant, but a higher trend to have the uh, lower rate of the complication like uh, a coronary perforation or a periprocedural MI. This is meaning the uh, uh, CT guidance could be related with the effective and safe procedure. So ladies and gentlemen, this is my uh, take home message. As the pre-procedure planning, the angiographic review is essential for the treatment of the uh, CTO treatment. In case of the complex, difficult CTO, pre-procedure CT planning is helpful and significantly associated with a higher CTO success with a, a lower trend of complication like a coronary preparation or periprocessor MI and a high efficiency. You know, this is the confirmed uh, in our randomized CT, CTO trial. So a thorough understanding of uh, CCTA image is we can know the CTO course, anatomical location, and classification analysis. We'll have to understand the reason of failure and, and to plan the CTO procedure, especially resultantly uh, to cause the fully understanding of the angiographic review. This is also a very important one. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, let's move to the third speaker. Uh, Dr. Kenya Nasu from Miha Center, Japan. Title is Wire and Microcatheter Selection and Handling for Calcified CTO PCI.
Will you start? Thank you, Chairman. And I started my lecture. So my lecture title, Why and the Microcaster Selection and the Hunting for the Cars by CTU PCI. So coronary calcification in CTU region is one of the independent predictors for the failure of the CTU PCI. This case, you can see the very severe calcification in the uh, RCCTU segment. So, of course, I started from down to the approach for penetration of the uh, proximal cap. The, in the multi CT findings, you can see the full moon calcification inside the CTO segment. So, I use a Gaia family and Conquest family, and finally, I use the Conquest 940 gram, but uh, I could not penetrate the proximal cap of the CTO. The after rotation, the uh, uh, my wires. So wire has been fractured. The fortunately, rope coil was not stretched and remained around the wire chip, but I felt this case. So even though that after crossing the guide wire, various techniques are needed to cross the Macucasta balloon and the stents. So for treatment of the calcification, in general, we needed a very big backup force and uh, Sometimes we need to do the region modif modification using by the rota rotational atrophy and a scoring pattern. So the anyway, I strongly recommended the for treatment and classified CTO using by the backup force type of the guiding shape uh, in the seven fringe or the eight fringe. So this case is our CTO. So you can see the severe confiscation middle of the CTO segment. So guy next three, fortunately, could penetrate the proximal cap. But uh, uh, after crossing the guide wire, so any balloon and uh, any microcaster could not go, even though the, I used the uh, uh, balloon anchor technique. So I decided to uh, cross the another wire inside the CTO segment. Finally, conquest program could be passed inside the uh, CTO segment as a second wire. After crossing the two wires, the design and the tronus pro could be passed. And after crossing the tronus pro, we can uh, dilate the uh, CTO segment using by the two button. But we could not uh, deliver the, the, any uh, stents so that we I uh, used the uh, uh, guide to for the mother child technique. The disk case circumflex is uh, very bending, is cultured by the CTO. The CTO segment is a uh, very uh, short, but the bend, but, but very tortuous and uh, very cultured. So after closing the wire, is a uh, uh, tool button could be passed, but uh, uh, not fully dilated. So I decided to uh, deliver the E1.5 load bar using by the uh, guide dosha. So I uh, operated by the 1.25 bar like this. So after a load operation, the two button uh, could be dilated fully like this. This is the final shot. And this is a, a light coronary uh, CTO with a severe calcification. So antegrade approach has been fair with a barren uh, coronary rupture. And also retrograde approach could not be uh, completed uh, because of the failure of the channel tracking. So this is the second session. So you, still we can see the severe calcification. So Gaia second, the third, and the final conquest program could be passed, but uh, uh, could not, after crossing the wire, any button could not be passed. So the, I also uh, using the second wire, the miracle trial gram, um, uh, to modification, for modification of the uh, CTO segment by drilling. The, I uh, crossed the uh, Miracle telegram several times inside the CTO body. So finally, so 1.25 button could be passed, but the uh, button uh, ruptured. 
So at the times I in this uh, side I could not use a lot of version, so uh, I use a two point zero NC button, and finally uh, we can dilate the button. So in the uh, I was findings you can see the severe calcification, almost napkin ring sign we can see. But uh, I dilated the uh, fully, and uh, this is the final shot. So the, in summary, the over rotation of the guide wire in calcification the CTOs may be associated with a core and a low core fracture. The combination of the various technique is required to close the mercury cassette the barrel over stents. Load abrasion is the best device for region modification if wire exchange is successful. So calcification crash by hard wire is one of the options for region modification without load ablation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Nasu. Play stay with us uh, after until the Q&A session. And first speaker is Dr. Satoru Ujuji uh, from Higashi Takajuka Sato Hospital, Japan. Okay. One month CTO PCI complications and troubleshootings. Ujuji, please. Thank you, Dr. Zhang. I'd like to talk about the uh, common CTO PCI complication, especially coronary perforation. Because of the coronary perforation rate is very, the most frequent complication of the CTO PCI. So the, this slide shows the treatment uh, algorithm for the coronary perforation. After uh, uh, finding the coronary perforation, the first step is inflate the balloon to occlude the vessel to stop bleeding and stabilize the uh, uh, hemodynamics. And if uh, the tamponade occurs, the pericardial synthesis is required. After that, general uh, treatment, uh, when the uh, extravasation persists, uh, to change the uh, uh, treatment of the specific uh, uh, regions, uh, specific uh, reason. So the one is thinks the large vessel percent, we put the covered scent or the prolonged balloon inflation. And uh, the, the, for the distal or the collateral vessel perforation, we usually put the embolic coil uh, for this type of the perforation. So I will focus uh, today on the uh, distal vessel and uh, uh, collateral perforations. This is the treatment flow of the distal vessel perforation. To keep the wire when suspected the distal perforation, then the stop uh, balloon tamponade for the massive breathing. Then the uh, wire and the mic second micro catheter into the distal site, and while the balloon depression and the inflation, then they put the embolic coil through the micro catheter. So these, are, uh, these two microcasts are popular in Japan. However, the cook embolization coil cannot pass through Corsair or the Corsair excess. So this is a treatment based perforation that we, I would like to show the effective coiling. So the don't push the coil far distal because the coil will float the pericardial death space. space. So the gently push the embolic coil while draw the micro catheter slowly. The, however, the, there is some difficulty for precise placement in this kind of pushable coils. When you use the uh, Azure detector the embolic coil, maybe that, that but uh, it uh, uh, precise coil embolization could be possible, but uh, we need to use a larger diameter micro catheter so the, it um, might not be possible, uh, practical, for the small collateral, collateral perforations. So I would like to, to show the case of the uh, collateral perforation. This case is the LED CTO. The, the, here is the severe calcium, so the antigrade approach failed. So I use uh, micro uh, septa channel. I cannot see the channel today, but uh, however, the SUO03 and the Carabell micro passed this region, 
this channel. And, uh, uh, and also the Carver microcaster also passed and the externalization understanding done in this case. However, after the uh, finishing, before the finishing procedure, we can find the large collateral perforation, septal perforation here. So we have to put the coil, put the coil to the perforation. So the first, first coil embolization from the LAD is successful. But the second coil embolization from the this, uh, RC is it's, um, it's not it's not successful because of the the margin of the uh, because of the microcaster is unstable and the margin of the RCA to the perforation size is very short. So the first coil in uh, put into the uh, perforation pocket. I, I I call the perforation pocket between the uh, left ventricular muscle um, and uh, right ventricular muscle, because the septa channel run, in, run between the, them. So the, I need the multiple coiling. The final coil uh, perhaps into the uh, RCA main branch. So the, this is a, this, here is the problem in this case. Microcaster position is important. However, if the micro position is unstable, coiling is very difficult. It will be inserted into the perforation pocket and or prolapsed into the main vessel, like this case. This is another case of the RCCT region with the bridging collateral. There are the, uh, two uh, septal channels. The this channel is, looks good. However, I, we decided that this uh, region is very tight and the tochasty is very, uh, the bending is very severe. So we choose, we choose uh, this first septal channel, but it caused a uh, big problem. So the, the channel is very small, but uh, the course is very straight. So the SUO03 can pass the channel successfully. But uh, any microcaster couldn't, uh, was, were not, were not, was not able to cross the channel. So we choose the second channel. The second channel, the wire passage and the micro passage is very smooth than we expected. So the procedure done. However, the, the final, before the, uh, f finishing the procedure, we cannot see the uh, active bleeding here. However, after the, removing the wire, the tip injection, we found the severe perforation with uh, the scepter. So we put the uh, uh, embolic color here, and uh, from the right coronary, it is uh, unpractical for the insert the micro uh, wire to the microcaster into the uh, distal uh, site. So we stop the bleeding from the ballooning of the uh, right uh, coronary artery, and then the put uh, embolic coil from the uh, LAD. However, after that, we found the LED guiding is disengaged from the LCD system, so it's a bad, it's too bad. So the, after the engaged the guide, the all uh, the uh, equipment that uh, pull out the uh, septal channel, so we can see the uh, severe uh, ch uh, channel of perforation remained. So in this in this case, I think uh, we think the 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 insert is the uh, wire and the microcaster is very uh, takes takes long time. So we have to treat it quickly. So the uh, put the uh, wire into the LED and the cover stand and cover the uh, uh, septal ostium. Uh, with a cover stand and the successful stop bleeding. So the 
The bidirectional coiling is common. However, the several options and the, uh, different uh, methods we have to take so regarding the perforation site. So this star side perforation wire, wire in place, coiling from the DSR that bridge the perforation side would be successful. For the proximal perforation, the channel diameter is so big that coiling might be ineffective. So the, in that case, the covered stand is a solution for the successful stop bleeding, like last case. So the proximal septal hematoma may cause RV compression and collapse. So the, there are two types of the covered stand. We can use two types of this covered stand, but we can choose them depending on the, their derivability and its mounting pressure. Sometimes the PK papyrus and the dislodged into the calcified tortuous vessel. So in my conclusion, coronary perforation is the most frequent problem during CT or PCI. Embolic coil is frequently used for this vessel and collateral perforations. Appropriate coiling is required depending on the site and morphology of the perforation. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Oji. Now, this first topic is open for comment and question. Any question or comment from the panel? Uh, I, uh, I'm Jung Min Nam from Asan Medical Center. I have a question to the Dr. Zhang and Dr. Ho Juji Sensei. The, I, was, I was very frustrated to review the contemporary the guidelines. So I'd like to ask the, the, the wiser man than me, so what is your opinion? The, what is the best target for CTO intervention considering in the context with the contemporary database? Uh, before answering your question, I would like to uh, question to you. <laughs> yes, yes. After decision <laughs> trial, <laughs> you and your center mm. did not do any CTO PCI? <laughs> <laughs> what is the uh, real world in your center? Uh, actually, my case, uh, uh, the, based on the, my practice, the, the, the first the, uh, the low ejection fraction patient, I like to open the CTO. In addition, frankly speaking, the stable, I, I didn't believe that the CTO uh, caused the patient symptom, so. If the large myocardial ischemia, I like to open. So two cases, the, that would be the, my uh, clinical the indication for CTO intervention. I have a, just a small comment here. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, maybe I think this is depend on the size of the myocardium mm -hmm. and the location of the myocardium and the quality of the myocardium. So actually, Currently, now we are doing uh, some study about after the CTO patient checking uh, physiology. And then, surprisingly, 30% cases are increasing very fast. But the uh, rest of the case, another 30% increase in the one year and two year. Another 30%, the last 30%, no change. Maybe I think uh, we include all of this case. Finally, maybe I think we cannot find out uh, any benefit to the CTOP share. This is just my idea currently. Yeah, I think that's a very important uh, issue. Uh, I totally agree with Dr. Nakamura that the myocardium amount is very important. And in the case that I can avoid cabbage mm -hmm. to open the CTO vessel, mm -hmm. then I try to open the uh, CTO region. Any other comment or question? I have a question to question. Dr. An. I have a question uh, for uh, Dr. Jim Ming An. Uh, because according to your trial, some intervention like uh, revive BCIS2 recently uh, published in the EC trial. It tells us that for half ref case, even you have a viable myocardium, but when you reverse calculation the vessel, the uh, improvement in symptom only lasts about not long. Uh, for one year, maybe just uh, seven months. Uh, how's your opinion? Would you choose some case to recanalize for CTO or critical um, cardiac myopathy? We still do vascularization or just intensive medical treatment from your uh, trial? 
Try out data. Thank, uh, thank you very much. It's a very I think a very critically important questions. But the, based on the data, the in ischemic cardiomyopathy, there is a randomized trial. The first trial is digital trial to compare the optimal medical treatment to, to compare bypass surgery. Initial report failed to show the the uh, higher su uh, survival rate uh, in the group of bypass surgery patient. But the extended follow up, the bypass surgery. Uh, associated with a longer, uh, higher survival rate compared with optimal medical treatment. The, this year, the revi revived the, the BCIS2 trial was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. There is no, no absolutely overlap the survival curve between the optimal medical treatment and the PCI. So, the, based on the clinical trial data, if you want to do something for ischemic cardiomyopathy, the based on the clinical, uh, cl clinical data, the bypass surgery would be a better option for such a patient. Mm -hmm. Okay, please. Mm -hmm. I have a question to Dr. An. You mentioned about the <laughs> importance of the ischemic burden and myocardial the reversibility. The decision trial, decision CTO trial did not uh, any the benefit in the CTO uh, PCI intervention. So, you have uh, any the data for the subgroup analysis for the ischemic burden or the mitochondrial the reversibility in assessing the uh, uh, MRI and SPECT? Uh, thank you very much. But unfortunately, we didn't have uh, the ischemic burden uh, subgroup analysis in the decision CTO uh, trial. So the, we did more data. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have one comment and one question to Dr. Kim. Uh, the, the comment is, uh, we all know that the complete revascularization is better than incomplete revascularization. So in terms of the viable myocardium with large ischemic burden, I think the CTOP study will make some difference in future trial. And sometimes, uh, like you know, JCD score less than two, it seems to simple to just doing the PCI, CTO PCI. However, sometimes uh, the intra CTO segment there is a very severe classification. So, do you think the pre procedural CT scan is mandatory in all CTO PCI or just uh, CTO script? Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Okay, you mean the uh, CT scan is the all CTO patient is needed or not, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so our uh, CT CTO trial is definitely uh, show the uh, the answer of the that question. So the so. Uh, um, many uh, interventionists uh, think the very uh, short CTO or sometimes a taped uh, CTO is a, oh, uh, there would be the, some um, good point of the CT scan in case of that simple CTO. You are right, is uh, uh, the regardless of the CT scanning performance, uh, the, that is the very easy CTO so we treat all successfully. However, a complex CTO is a long CTO and heavy calcified lesion. Sometimes uh, from the angiographic reviews, the, we don't know the uh, exact point of the proximal cap or distal cap. It's, this kind of uh, uh, complex CTO is definitely CT could be helpful. This, this is the uh, some message of the CT CTO trial. So the, I recommended the uh, failed CTO. Well, this is the very good option for the uh, CT scan before the CTO procedure. And also, is uh, we don't know the exact location and path of the CTO. Is that is the also is a good case for the pre-procedure CT scanning. Okay, I have a one question. Yep. We easily understand that CT is very useful for anti-grade uh -huh. However, you show the retrograde success rate is higher yeah. in the CT. Right. What is the main reason? Yeah, so, so uh, the, the, that kind of questions I've got uh, so many at times. So I leave it again. The, some failed case of the uh, NGO group guided uh, NGO guided group is the uh, uh, from the the many cases the uh, the uh, 
initial uh, wiring would be good, <laughs> but the wire passage is, uh, and also the, the some uh, wiring direction is definitely different. And also the, there was uh, uh, no confirmed, the, and, and also as I previously mentioned, is uh, some failure of lateral grade, is, uh, and half of one is the, the failure of the anti-grade preparation. I see, I see, yeah. okay. <laughs> So, Any, uh, Sensei, uh, you talk about the septal channel perforation. Mm -hmm. You coil all the septal channel perforation, or which case you you ah. gonna wait? And ah, okay, okay. So, if the we, you, we usually see the uh, hematoma in the uh, between the uh, LV and the RV muscle, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes the hematoma is. Uh, 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 size is changing by between bit by bit. It means uh, it means uh, I think the comp decompression mm -hmm. occurred in the hematoma. But the hematoma is uh, with the bigger than the one one millimeter, and uh, uh, mm, the uh, mm, configuration is irregular. The edge is irregular. It means uh, not capsule. By, uh, I think the expand is uh, more uh, bigger. Mm -hmm. So yeah. in that case, I put the uh, coils. Mm -hmm. Dr. Nasu, are you there? No, Nasu is uh, not a uh, commentator, okay. so the Habara. <laughs> <laughs> Habara, any question or comment? Uh, yes, I, I want to uh, have a question to the, so, big, Dr. Big Kim. So that the, so, uh, the, for the touch the so CTO PCI, so the ischemic burden was a uh, visceral area is a uh, very important. So I think that so uh, mm, the CT could be checked as so visceral area or uh, uh, ischemic burden area. Mm -hmm. So do you use uh, so CT scan for such a uh, uh, indication of the so CTO PCI or not? Ah, oh, okay. So is a Anyway, good to see you, Dr. Habara. Yeah, Hi, so, no, uh, and also yeah. very good question. So, actually, the, our team uh, include uh, uh, some different team of CT group. Is, uh, uh, that group is uh, uh, usually a non-interventional team. Is, uh, they only, they uh, focused on the area of ischemic lesion. But uh, uh, as you mentioned, uh, there is uh, some kind of study field. So I did not clinically relevancy. So the, mm -hmm. uh, you all mentioned the role of the CT scan is that kind of uh, uh, measuring or evaluation of ischemic area is, is really, really good. It, uh, meaning the anatomical uh, assessment and also the functional assessment yeah, yeah. to uh, assessment could be possible. So you, mm -hmm. your uh, suggestion and mention is really good. Thanks so much. Okay, last question or comment? Can I ask a question? Uh, yes, so please. Dr. Uh, Dr. An? Okay, uh, I'm Dr. Lu from Malaysia. Okay, we know from the uh, 2018 uh, guideline, a uh, CTO intervention for ESC guideline is class 2A, and also for SCC guideline is class 2B. So CTO intervention is not class 1A, is because we don't have a good uh, randomized control trial to, sp uh, uh, to prove the survival. From your decision CTO try versus optimal medical treatment, we know there's no survival benefit. Uh, my question is, I want to know, I think same uh, question asked by the panelists uh, just now. Do in your decision CTO try, do you have a subgroup analysis, for example? I think we believe that if you open up a proximal LAD CTO versus we open up a, a distal RCA CTO, I think probably the ischemic burden is different. So in this this CTO, do we have any subgroup comparison? Whether we compare, open up the proximal CTO versus the proximal CTO medical treatment, or is just in a in a, a comparison? Maybe maybe you you uh, or panelists would like to uh, comment on this. Whether would it do you think that if you compare, uh, specifically proximal LD CTO versus proximal LD CTO? PCI versus medical treatment, would you think that may make a survivor uh, benefit different? Uh, uh, thank you very much. That is a very important uh, clinical question. But unfortunately, in this CTO uh, clinical trial, the subgroup analysis, there is no, the, we did not find that any benefit uh, group from the CTO intervention. 
But in other clinical trial, the explorer trial I, I mentioned before, the, they random, randomized the, the STEMI patient with the CTO. In such a, a clinical trial, in the subgroup analysis, it showed that the proximal CTO intervention improved. The explorer trial, the primary endpoint is improvement to ejection fraction at four month MRI assessment. So the LAD, uh, uh, LAD CTO PCI is associated significant, uh, LAD CTO PCI to improve the, the uh, uh, ejection fraction at four month. The, interaction p-value is quite significant. So uh, I, I found only one uh, subgroup data from the Explorer trial uh, regarding your question. Thank you. Okay, I think it's time to close this session. I'd like to thank you for all the four speakers and on all the panelists and audience as well. Thank you very much. Let's close this session. Thank you.